with ongoing and increasing intensity the Palestinian leadership is fixated on advancing a concerted policy vis-a-vis -vis the international community and public opinion demanding recognition of what they claim to be the 1967 borders and acceptance of a unilaterally declared Palestinian state within those borders. Indeed, this campaign appeared to have some initial successes in December of 2010 when both Argentina and Brazil decided to recognize a Palestinian state within what they uh, described as the 1967 borders. Come September, they are expecting at least 150 plus uh, states to uh, recognize a Palestinian state based on these borders. In actual fact, the Palestinian leadership, as well as members of the international community, are well aware that such borders do not exist, nor have they ever existed. They have never figured in any of the international uh, agreed upon documentation concerning the Israel Arab and Israel Palestinian issues, and have no basis whatsoever. Uh, neither in law nor in fact. There are no provisions in any of the agreements signed between Israel and the Palestinians that require withdrawal to the 1967 borders. There were never any geographic uh, imperatives that sanctify the 1967 lines. Clearly, there could be no legal or political logic to enshrining as an international boundary any inadvertent and coincidental set of uh, ceasefire lines that existed for less than 19 years. While the above is fully evident to the Palestinian leaders who are actively and daily advancing this policy, principally the head of the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, and the head of the Negotiations Department of the Authority, Saeb Arakat, both of whom were themselves actively involved in all the stages of negotiation. They nevertheless continue it with their fixation to, rep uh, to present the concept of the 1967 borders as an accepted international term of art and as an Israeli commitment. The following is a summary of the background to the 1967 lines as described in the international documentation. The term 1967 lines Re, uh, refer to the line from which Israel military forces moved into the territories at the start of hostilities on June 4, 1967, which is the Six-Day War. These lines were not based on historical fact, natural geographic formations, demographic considerations, or international agreement. In fact, they had served as the agreed-upon armistice demarcation lines from the termination of the 1948 War of Independence pursuant to the armistice agreements signed between Israel and its neighbors Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon in 1949. These lines remained valid until the outbreak of the 1967 hostilities. The armistice demarcation line represented nothing more than the forward lines of deployment of the forces on the day a ceasefire was declared as set out by the Security Council Resolution 62 of November 16, 1948, which called for the delineation of permanent armistice demarcation lines beyond which the armed forces of the respective parties will not move. The line was demarcated on the map attached to the armistice agreement with a green marker pen and hence received uh, the name of the green line. The Security Council in its resolution stressed the temporary nature of the armistice lines that were to be maintained during the transition to permanent peace in Palestine, uh, imitating that permanent peace that would involve negotiating permanent bilateral borders that would be different from the armistice demarcation lines. Statements from Arab and other sources between 1949 and 1967 confirm the common understanding as to the transitional nature of the lines. During the debate in the Security Council before the outbreak of hostilities in 1967, the Jordanian ambassador stated, There is an armistice agreement. The agreement did not fix boundaries. It fixed a demarcation line. 
The agreement did not pass judgment on rights, political, military, or otherwise. Thus, I know of no territory, I know of no boundary, I know of a situation frozen by an armistice agreement. Judge Stephen Schwebel, former president of the International Court of Justice, uh, stated in 1994, the armistice agreement of 1949 expressly uh, preserved the territorial claims of all parts and did not purport to establish definitive boundaries between them. The transitory nature of the 1949 armistice demarcation lines was clearly acknowledged by the Security Council in Resolution 242 of 1967 after the Six Day War, which affirmed in its first paragraph respect for and acknowledgement of the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and political independence of every state in the area and their right to live in peace within secure and recognized boundaries free from threats or acts of force. There is no call in this resolution for a return to the armistice demarcation lines or to any other line or border. The Security Council specifically dismissed the Arab demand for the text that required Israel to completely return all the territory it occupied during the 1967 conflict. Israel was called upon to withdraw from territories occupied in the recent conflict, not from all the territories or even from the territories. At the same time, the Council called upon the parties to, to work together to promote agreement on a peaceful and accepted settlement in accordance with the provisions and principles of the resolution. Clearly this statement was intended to include the negotiation of secure and recognized boundaries that would replace the armistice uh, demarcation lines pursuant to the above references in the armistice agreements to the same ultimate peaceful settlement. The above references to uh, permanent status negotiations on borders and to achieving the aims of Security Council Resolution 242 were repeated in a series of mutually agreed documents entered into between the PLO and the Israel government. Furthermore, with a view to, the, uh, to strengthening this commitment, they undertook in the 1995 interim agreement not to act unilaterally to change the status of the territories pending outcome of those permanent status negotiations. The agreement states neither side shall initiate or take any step that will change the status of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip pending the outcome of the permanent status uh, negotiations. This understanding was reiterated by the parties in Article 9 of the 1990 Shire Elm Sheik a Memorandum. It states recognizing the necessity to uh, create a positive environment for the negotiations. Neither side shall initiate or take any step that will change the status of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip in accordance with the interim agreement. Throughout all the phases of negotiations on these various agreements and memoranda between Israel and the Palestinians, and in the text of these documents. There was never any reference to the 1967 lines as a potential border between the two neighbors, nor was there any reference to any commitment or obligation by Israel to withdraw to the 1967 lines. Even in the most recently created quartet-initiated performance-based road map to a permanent two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict document, of uh, April 30th, 2003. In this document, the parties were expected in the second and third phases of implementation of the roadmap and after election of a responsible Palestinian leadership to engage in negotiation uh, focusing on the option of creating an independent, viable Palestinian state, initially with provisional borders. As you can see, this international effort is based purely on international public opinion and fictitious wishful thinking. It is clear in Security Council Resolution 242 of 1967 following the Six-Day War, Israel was guaranteed the right to live in peace within secure and recognized boundaries free from threats or acts 
of force. Furthermore, according to this resolution, these borders, when created, must be defensible, secure, and free from threats. An Israeli retreat back to an indefensible and undefined supposed 1967 borders simply would not meet this crucial criteria. This is simply nothing more than an Arab attempt to place Israel in an indefensible situation by way of international pressure. Their goal continues to be the destruction of Israel and that should not be overlooked for one moment. This is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.